I was dreadfully nervous. I could feel my increased heart rate. I noticed I was sweating a ton. I was moving much quicker than I should have been. And you know, everything I had researched said you need to be very mellow and slow down and calm. And, and my first experience was the opposite, and totally out of my control, because I was just trying to get in and then get out safely. I think I was scared. I knew I, that I had the protective equipment. I knew theoretically I should be fine and they couldn't get to me but the subconscious kind of fight or flight part of my brain was not sharing that comfort. And that was very uh, surreal feeling. Hey, Justin. Hey, Tom, how are you? I'm good, how you doing? Good, I'm at your gate and uh, I've got some bees with me. Okay, I'll let you in. Hold on. I am uh, delivering some bees to Tom. He's decided to get into the hobby of beekeeping. So I, uh, I had some extra bees, so we set them aside, got them in a hive for him, and I'm going to bring him up. He's going to get them all set up, and we're going to go over, I'm going to go over just kind of the basics with him on, you know, stuff he needs to know to get in his hive himself. I have a hobby of brewing beer, and so one night I was watching a YouTube video on making mead, which is fermented honey solution, and so I decided I'd want to try and make mead as a takeoff from brewing beer. And then I got the idea that I would harvest my own honey so that the mead I made was kind of 100% homemade. So that got me interested in looking into getting bees so that I could harvest honey. Five years later in many beehives, I still haven't made my mead, but I have a lot of bees, so. Tom. How you doing, Justin? Good. I've got your bees here, but there's some flying around, so we're gonna get bee suits on relatively early. Um, they must have found a little escape pod. Oh. So, do you have your suit with you? I do. So, is what I think we should do is, you suit up, I'm gonna suit up, and then um, maybe back the ranger up here. We'll load the bees into the ranger, and I wanna get them down to whatever spot you have sooner rather than later so that the ones that are flying around, um, so they can reorient down in their new home. Great. So get your suit on, and then I'll come check your gear to see and make sure you're zipped up. Okay. All right. The idea of beekeeping was something that I've been thinking about for probably 15 or 20 years. And going into the hive today for the first time is going to be pretty interesting. I'll, che I'll check those, you know what? Um, you can wear a hat if you want, because the hat will keep the veil off your face. Okay. Because sometimes when you're not paying attention, the veil will come and they'll stick you right there. All right. So I brought an extra, and let me get you geared up. Um, Let's see here. Okay. How are you feeling? Wonderful. Are you? Yeah, this is pretty exciting. There's a little tiny gap right here, like a finger. Uh huh. They'll find that if when you're when you're suiting up every time, it's good to look in a mirror or just just know your suit and know exactly how the zippers go. Mm. Because if there is a gap, they're gonna find it. No kidding. Yeah, they will. So. When I look back on when I first started beekeeping and some of the things I could have done differently, I've had a few harrowing moments. One of which occurred when my bee suit wasn't closed all the way. Uh, when I first started keeping bees, I wasn't as cautious about that. And I got some bees inside my veil and all of a sudden I would feel a, a bee crawling on my neck uh, or pop up on my cheek. And, and that was very uh, surreal feeling and quite, a freak out moment i've uh my wife has seen me just running across my yard swatting at my neck in, in my bee suit <laughs> all right i'll slide them out we have to be careful not to jostle them too much yeah or? we should try and be careful can you lift if someone in their heart of hearts really wants to get into bees but 
the idea of the unknown or things like that is preventing it, I would say go for it, educate yourself, but I would also link up with someone that I either knew or was local that was already into beekeeping and had experience, because I don't think anything can replace just shoulder to shoulder, being together, going through a hive for the first time. Okay. When we get down there, I'll pull the strap off and all that. We'll get it set up on the hive and we'll pull that out and it'll be free. Cool, let's do it. What a nice day. When I think about Tom, his experience with his first hive, he's gonna face some challenges, any new beekeeper does. I think he's gotta be feeling some nervousness, but I know Tom pretty well and he takes everything head on and uh, there isn't too much that discourages him or intimidates him. So I, I think he's, he's gonna enjoy it from day one and I think he's gonna have a lot of personal confidence with the way we're going about it. So wherever we want to put them, we want to put them so, they're face, so their entrance is facing south. Okay. And well. probably down at the end right here would be perfect. Okay. Nice. Do you know which way is exactly south? Yep. That's okay. due south right there. The studies show that that's where they like to leave their hive if they can. So, get that guy set up. You want to put it in the shade, Justin, or um, does it have to be level, or? As level as we can get it would be good. Um, right here looks good, too. Um, let's see. We'll set the hive there. These right here, Tom, when you start doing hive inspections. Yep. You can, you can pull frames out and temporarily set them here. It's a really nice function to have. On the, these stands are real nice, so. Cool. All right, let's see here. If you want to guide me on there so I get in between. That's it. Yep. Let me get to the side. It's, okay. All right, Tom, it's time to uh, let these guys go. So I'm going to have you take this hive tool Right in between, and I'll kind of lift right in between here little. and here. Just, just the bar. Yeah, slide that bar out. That, okay, this, that, this bar. That piece, yeah. Just take that out. You can grab it with your hands. There we oh, go. Okay. Now they'll come out. All right, Tom, before uh, we get you going on your bees, I wanna go over the basic equipment, some of the hive components that you'll need to know right away. I always keep some uh, EpiPens around. I think that those are a, a great thing to have either in your refrigerator or in a cooler when you're with your hives. Um, you know whether you're allergic or not, but you don't know if other people are neighbors, uh, friends, family, things like that. So, so I think that's a great piece of insurance to have. Great. And you're gonna use the smoker to smoke your bees. And is what it does is, um, I don't know that it necessarily calms the bee, but the smoke interferes with their ability to communicate with each other. So if they decide they don't like you in the hive and they all wanna start talking about finding that hole in your bee suit and to get you, that smoke will help uh, slow down or or interfere with their ability to communicate. They associate smoke with, they think something's danger. on fire with danger. They think that maybe there's a fire by their hive, something like that. So they're thinking that they may need to pack up and move right away. 
And so just like you would if your house was on fire, you go and grab your important pictures and you go do things. So they're trying to go grab that honey, store it up for their trip when they got to hit the road and go find a new, a new home. So um, you're kind of fooling them into thinking that they need to go pack and that allows you to open the lid and go inspect them. They make commercial smoker pellets. Oh. So these are real easy. You just light one. See, and then wow. they'll sit in there and start smoking. Oh, that's cool. So how much smoke do, actually has to come out of there before you can uh, uh, achieve the purpose? This is a good amount here. Really? Um, it's not a lot, but this is sufficient. I like more smoke, so I'll pack it full of pine needles and really get it going. But this is, uh, this is plenty. It smells good. Yeah, it does. When I first got into it, you know, smoke was my safety net and my friend, so I was probably just giving them way too much smoke. So how long will that, uh, how long will you need to smoke the, to do whatever you, you're doing normally? Right, so is what I'll do uh, normally. I'll smoke in the entrance. I'll blow some smoke in there, get some smoke in the hive. I'll crack the lid. I'll put some smoke in, and then I let it sit for about a minute, minute and a half. That gives the bees time to start uh, diving in. And then I'll just open the lid and see how they react. If a bunch of bees don't jump in my face, if they look like they're calm and busy, then you, you probably don't need any more smoke because you don't, you don't need to just blast them with it. But if you open that lid and they're rushing out at you, you may want to throw a few more squirts of smoke and let them sit for another minute and just ease yourself into it instead of just completely inundating them. Next in line is your hive tool. They make a few different styles of this. They're all basically the same. Um, so is what you're going to do, so you always have this on hand, either, and, and when you go, you're going to go in and, and, and wedge. This is going to be like a pry bar for a lot of things. They may build comb in a bad spot, and you'll scrape it off. One of the first things that the bees do in a hive, they create a product called propolis. It's a very sticky, it's, it's almost like a sticky, uh, uh, waxy substance. They go through and they and they glue everything down in the hive. Oh wow! Yeah, all these will be glued and, and and stiff. So you always need the hive tool to pry things apart and to clean up things when they're building comb in areas you don't want. Um, there's a lot of uses for that tool. Um, this is called a, a super, and these are the frames that go in it. Okay, there's ten of these in this hive. They're specifically designed to have a space that works for the bees to uh, keep, keep the temperature in the hive optimal for what they need to raise their young, to survive, um, and to keep their honey and nectar from dripping out of the hive. So the next tool, um, I, don't, I haven't used my brush very often, but this is a bee brush. I, I think guys that are producing a lot of honey probably use them more, but... Um, it's very gentle and, and you, can, you can manipulate or move the bees without hurting them with this. So, you know, if, if this was bee comb you wanted, you were looking at, but it was covered in bees and you needed to see past the bees, you could take this brush and lightly brush them off and it won't hurt them or crush them, but it'll move them and now you can inspect that part of the comb you want. And will so. that, by doing that, will it antagonize the bees or are they pretty docile and will just it depends on the particular bees. I have certain hives that that will agitate them and I have other hives that they'll just move out of the way and it won't be a big deal. So yeah, it definitely has the potential to, you know, antagonize them a little cause you're manipulating them. But again, it's just gonna depend on the particular hive and you'll get to know your hives over time. And hey, this hive I know is a little more aggressive than that one. I don't use the brush in there and things like that. I've learned my experience has been um, in a hive body they raise their babies more in the middle here. And then as you get out, it gets more food stores and honey. The last thing we have is a queen excluder, which is here. Uh, you may or may not use this. Uh, it's, it's a little bit more of an advanced item, but is what this is designed for is if you get to a point where you wanna isolate the queen in certain areas of your hive. Um, one of the primary reasons to do that would be you want your bees to produce some honey and you want on the comb that they're making the honey, you want primarily honey there as much as you can get it. You don't want babies being laid in with the honey. 
So this queen excluder was designed. So let's say this is, this is where the queen is and she's laying babies down here. You can put this queen excluder on and then put another box with frames on top this is designed so that the queen cannot fit through these slats, but all the other bees can. You can put your other box on. You know now that whatever's built in the second box, there will not be a queen laying eggs or babies. It increases the potential that you'll get straight honey up there or pollen or nectar. And so that's what these queen excluders are primarily for. So I have a question for you. Uh, a couple of minutes ago, you said when you, when you get stung or now, so this bee suit that I have uh, is supposed to give me really good protection. Yes. Uh, how likely is it that I'm going to get stung as I'm uh, enjoying this hobby? If your suit's properly attached, you have your hat on, um, I would say you're going to get stung less than 1% of the time if you just pay attention to what you're doing. But you will get stung. So, and what do you think when you get stung? It makes the honey taste sweeter. <laughs> so... So that's the rundown of the hive. Um, that's what you're gonna be looking for. And we'll go into one of my hives and I'll show you this stuff in action. The thing I really enjoy about hobbies is they are very consuming. If you have a passion for something, you can really get lost in it. You're not thinking about the past, the future. You're just really right in the moment. It can also bring a lot of joy to your life. When I go into my beehive, I get a total moment of clarity. It's one of those points in time that doesn't happen that often, at least for me, where I'm so focused on my inspection of the bees that I'm not thinking about anything else. And there's something subconscious in my brain that relieves a lot of stress for me. All right, so now, we're gonna see how they react. Okay. We'll just sit that down. Wow. You're gonna to wanna to go real gentle. Slow movement. Slow is good. Wow. These guys are just hanging on top. Holy smoke. No, no pun intended. <laughs> so, like I'll just set these guys here. Wow. Now, see how these bees don't really do much here? They're nice, calm bees. If they weren't as calm, they'd be jumping up at you. Okay? And it's a little windy with smoke. So is what you'll do, when you get it, like we need to get a frame out, right? Mm -hmm. So you just come in real gentle and just kind of push these guys out of the way. So you try not to crush them. Now I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna kind of Jar it. It, it's stuck to this one, so I'm going to go in over here. I'm going to twist it to separate it on that end and that end. Now I can come in and lift up. And you're going to be real gentle and you'll get it. Wow. And you're going to come out real slow. Holy smoke. Okay. Wow. Now you're immediately, my queen's marked. It has a green dot on it. So if you see something with a green dot, let me know. But, so if you look here, something you can do if you want to, like I want to move these guys so we can look in here. You can use that brush or you can blow on them. And they'll run out of the way. See there's nectar here? Yeah. And this is covered babies here. There's some larvae, there's eggs here I can see. And this guy's drinking. Yeah, they're, the, the they honey, smelled huh? a little smoke and they're in there trying to get some stuff out. And I see down here, the honeycomb is outside of the Yeah, they've uh, built, and that's where you'll take this hive tool and you oh, can wow. clean that stuff up and just leave it on the ground. They'll, they'll reuse it, but you can clean that stuff up if you want. Wow. And you see, you can move real gentle and they'll kind of get out of your way. We call that burr comb. Like burr, it's cold. Burr comb is comb they build in places you don't want. And here's a little honey up here. See the honey? Yeah. So they've got brood babies, open, open space where they're doing either nectar or eggs. They've got nectar and honey up here. Yeah. Okay, so now I'll leave this out. 
And if I had a hive stand, I could put this in that. Uh -huh. See, but so you can just set this real gentle. Just let them be, and now that creates space now to move some more frames. So now I'll get the next frame. And then you want to try and pry it up? Sure. It's, it's, yeah, if you can, however you can lift it. Okay. So you'll pull up. You're going to immediately look for the queen. Don't see. And then you can, Turn you can rotate that and just flip it up. Give the bees a chance to get out of the way when I rest it. Oh, there's there's the queen. You see her? Yep, she's got Where, a little green. Yeah, in see her? There you go. On her. Yep. Now watch. I've got my queen cage here. Right. Yeah. So if I was going to cage her, I'd just gently come in here. Did you get her? I don't know. Did I? Yep, she's right in there. Wow. So now we know she's safe, okay? Yeah. Now I'll set her in a safe place. I'll just set her right here, okay? Yep. Now we know we, have, we cannot crush our queen in here because she's out. Yep. And now you can be a little, you know, a little quicker with your inspections and whatnot. Okay, and? Good job spotting her, by the way. There's a whole dynamic within the hive they're always competing for space and resources, and there's a democratic process that takes place in the hive where, you know, certain bees are making decisions for other bees, and sometimes I compare that or analyze that against the way humans operate. It just absolutely fascinates me. Yeah, see, this is, you're seeing a lot of brood, a lot of baby which tells you they need more space. That's why I'm gonna add that, because you can see they're built out. Every frame uh -huh. is full. So that's that's plenty, we're probably good. I'll, I might button these guys back up and add, I'm gonna add a box so they have room to grow uh -huh. from here. And see, it's really nice to know we have the queen out of the way. I know I'm not squishing her. Now is what we'll do is we're gonna add a box, okay? Just kinda get it on. And slowly. Now we take our queen. Like I need to get these, you can be actually pretty forceful and shake them off like that. Mm -hmm. She'll go right down in there and there she goes. She just went yep. back down into yep. the, into the comb. Yep. And now they're fanning pheromone, telling everyone, hey, she's down here. Because it's a new, uh -huh. see them, look at them. Yep. They're, and and what's Because this is new to them. So they're trying to let everyone know, hey, this is new, but she's down here, we're all down here. So they're trying to blow the scent out. And then put this back on. And I made this, it's just to, to provide some ventilation. Uh huh. Then you'll take your top, bees, shake them. Now they're buttoned up. And now you just sit here and enjoy the chaos. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And a lot of these bees returning right here are bees that have been out in the field. They don't know anything went on. They're just coming back to the ship. Oh, okay. They're landing. They don't know. And, uh, but these bees here, see these bees out front? Yep. These are like guard bees, and they're just working that entrance. Making sure it's safe. Yep, they're blowing the pheromone sure out. They're letting everyone know this is the right spot because they know that this is new. Okay. Something's changed. So when I first started keeping bees, I found myself uh, having a beer before I would go into my hive. And um, I think it was probably to calm my nerves a little bit. And then um, that became just kind of this tradition for me. You know, it was nice to get done with the experience and then just sit back and continue you know, the relaxation. And, and a lot of times I 
I'll take a beer with me and, and just kind of, after I get done, I'll, I'll just sit there and enjoy that moment and then kind of reflect on what I just saw in my hive and, and things like that. So what did, uh, how did you feel when you saw those bees? Well, you know what? I was, real, I was really calm about the whole thing, but when you took the top off and we saw this huge mass of bees, I, it really did set me back for a few seconds. I went, whoa, that is, that's more bees than I've seen in my life in one spot. And then when you pull it out and they're hanging all over the place, it took on a different complexion than just looking at a, a box and knowing that bees were in there. Yeah, your natural response is like, yeah, this isn't, this isn't where I should be. So after uh, getting in my hive, knowing that you've got yours, do you feel like you're gonna have a, a decent level of confidence to go down, get in your hive? I do. I mean, with this protection and uh, knowing that uh, there's not a lot that can go wrong as long as you're well protected, I, I think over a period of time, I'll get more and more comfortable in uh, going down and, and doing just what we did today. Well, good, I'm excited for you. Thank you. Thank you. This is fun. Thank you for spending a whole day. Oh, thank you for hanging in there.